for me, like I, that's where my whole life has gone to is like, you're always, you're just trying to like do the things that you can. And sometimes it can get overwhelming because it's kind of endless of the things that you can get better at. You're, you're never really like feel, and you never will be the best or meet perfection at anything. Mm -hmm. And so you can, you can kind of chase things into oblivion. Um, but sometimes it's just the best ideas when I just go, you know what? My boards are the way they are. I've surfed this wave. I know the lineups. I feel good physically. Okay. I'm just going to surf. Mm -hmm. And when you get that feeling of like, ha, ah, it's like this really good feeling in those moments of pressure. Yep. When you have that feeling of what, that you really have let go in a heat and you're just like, oh my gosh, like I can't wait to surf right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. That's a pretty good feeling to have when you're competing against someone. Um, cause you just know, like, you're like, when I get this next wave, like, I'm just going to surf it the best I can. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. You're kind of like laughing to yourself almost. <laughs> That's John Florence. I'm Jamie Brissick. This is Soundings, brought to you by The Surfer's Journal. The Surfer's Journal is a member-supported publication made possible by sponsorship from Birdwell, FCS, Patagonia, Rainbow, Vans, Visla, and Yeti. More like a book than a magazine, TSJ brings you 128 pages of independent storytelling every eight weeks, covering the people, culture, travel, and art of surfing. To learn more or to subscribe, please visit surfersjournal.com. I first met John when he was eight or nine years old. He was John John back then. He lived with his two younger brothers and single mom in a beachfront home at Ehukai. The four of them would surf together out front, all towheads. John John was a child prodigy with big hopes and expectations placed on his shoulders, and I worried for him. I'd seen enough surfing to know how easily this can go bad. But he fulfilled expectations tenfold. And more importantly, he's managed to hang on to his kindness, curiosity, and wonder. John won back-to-back -back world titles in 2016 and 2017. He won the Eddie in 2016. At age 13, standing just 4 foot 11 and weighing 85 pounds, he was the youngest surfer ever to compete in the Vans Triple Crown. John competed for the USA in the 2020 Olympics in Japan. He won the Triple Crown in 2021 and 2022. His career has been marked by many injuries, unfortunately. He's made a bunch of films, among them View from a Blue Moon, the first surf film shot in 4K. In 2020, with Bob Hurley as his partner, he launched his own apparel and surf brand, Florence Marine X. John and I spoke remotely. He was in Hawaii, I was in Los Angeles. John Florence, welcome to the show. Awesome. Um, let's talk about photography. You have a Leica around your neck a lot. <laughs> what, yeah. What, what do you like to shoot? Uh, I just kind of like to shoot my travels and the places I get to go to. And um, I think it's something I picked up from my mom when we were traveling when we were younger. She always had a camera I was shooting photos of the places we got to go. And um, yeah, I don't know. As I continue getting to travel to all these amazing places, I like to just take photos of it. And it's kind of a fun, creative process. And I've been, I've really enjoyed learning about it and learning about cameras and film and digital and all the different aspects of it. Very cool. And you've been very, uh, instrumental in making films and videography and, and sort of the documentation of surfing as well as just doing the surfing. Yeah, yeah, it's just I think it kind of stems from uh enjoying to learn about photography and cameras and stuff. Um so that's just kind of on the other side is the videography of, of it getting to work with all these amazing cameras and um the things that they can do now is just so incredible. Um you know, getting to work with Red uh the last few years has been really fun because there's such amazing cameras for surfing and I don't know, I just I've always enjoyed, yeah, I just enjoy it and even getting to shoot some film stuff in the past with 16 and stuff like that. It's just kind of been this like growing evolution since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. When you were younger coming up, were you watching a lot of movies and videos? Were you like deep into that? Yeah, definitely. Like, uh, searching for Tom Curran was like one of my favorite movies ever. Um, and then kind of even more to some of the more recent, uh, Kai Neville and Taylor Steele movies. Um, and just like kind of getting fired up on, uh, entertaining surf movies and then as well as there's a there's a lot of uh some of jack johnson's movies also kind of inspired me a lot yeah me too 
It's interesting because uh, I've known you guys for a long time now, and I remember your mom told me that one of the things that inspired her to move from New Jersey to to Hawaii was watching surf movies with Hawaii in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, God, it's amazing how big of an impact surf films have on us. It's like on the same note, like the Endless Summer kind of like changed my life on some level. <laughs> yeah, so Endless Summer 2 for me <laughs> was paddo and wingnut and it just me and my brothers watched that movie every day when we were young Uh uh-huh (laughs) yeah (laughs) so i can remember you when you were a kid uh probably like building sandcastles uh, you know on 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 the beach uh at ehukai and pipeline right there but and when i think of you and your evolution i almost think of like you went from kind of building sandcastles on the beach or playing on the beach with your brothers and then and then in the shore break and then very soon after like in the lineup at pipe yeah definitely um i just think it was growing up here and being in the water and i don't know i just feel like anything you do in life you're always kind of like looking over to that next thing it's like okay what's kind of next like where where can i go to next what's around the next corner and um for me my life has been very much like that you know like you said growing up from just being on the beach to bodyboarding the shore rig to maybe sitting on the shoulder at pipe and then kind of inching my way into the lineup and then now being like uh, where I am in that lineup and with my brothers and trading off barrels on some of the biggest days. And um, it's pretty incredible to see uh, where, like, yeah, where, where it's come to and how, and how much fun we're having with it. Thinking of like, say, Kelly Slater, he would have grown up in Florida. He would have had, you know, a little beach break in front of him, but the waves that he now rides regularly, like those waves weren't available to him growing up. You guys grew up in like this mythical place with some of the best waves in the world, you know, within like a mile on either side of you. Did you know that? Or were you just like a fish swimming in water going I, I, it's just water to me. I think it was a fish swimming in water. It's just water to me. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You know, when you're, when you're in it and your, your whole life is in it, it's just kind of is what it is. That's your lifestyle. But now like looking back and getting to travel the places I've traveled to and just kind of see life from different perspectives. Um, I feel like I respect it and uh, a lot more Mm -hmm. and I have a lot more gratitude towards what we've had here growing up. Um, So yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting what travel can do for you in, in those ways when you like look back and go, wow, like we grew up in one of the most incredible places in the world for surfing. Like (laughs) it it really, during the winter time, I still haven't really been anywhere quite like it where, like you said, it's, there's world class waves like within a mile, and you can walk to every one of them. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I distinctly remember, and I love this one so much. There was a movie that the photographer and filmmaker Todd Messick made. It didn't get out to the world, but the climax shot, it's like a basically like a love letter to the North Shore, but the climax of it is a water slide set up on the beach, slanting down. And there's a bit where everyone's going down the water slide and it's in slow motion. And there's a bit where you jump on Kelly Slater's back and you like, you get up and you surf, <laughs> surf on his back down this water slide. And, and, and me as a writer in my mind, I'm like, okay, there's a whole story in that right there. That's like the passing on of the generation in some way. <laughs> yeah. What was it like growing up with, with that around you? Um, growing up as a surfer and a little kid surfing and, and then having these greats of our sport come to Hawaii every single winter and spend as much time as they do here um, was pretty incredible. And, you know, so to be in the same area as Kelly and get to know Kelly as a young kid and, uh, and have him be this like bigger than life kind of person, but then he's right there and you're talking to him and you're surfing with him and um, creating these relationships with these people is pretty, I mean, I just, yeah, it's incredible. Um, and growing up with that and having that inspiration kind of everywhere around you was, uh, I don't know, I'd put a lot of that to where I am today, you know, as long as well as like my mom just like being there and supporting us in kind of all these little areas of where we wanted to go with the ocean. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just like this crazy, like melting pot of just the uh, talent that's in the water here, whether, you know, it's like a Mark Cunningham body surfing or a Kelly Slater surfing or a, uh, it's just, yeah, it's, it's really, it's really crazy. The amount of talent of watermen that you have here. And did you find like, was everyone pretty supportive? Yeah, everyone was very supportive and everyone was always watching out. I felt like, um, when I was, especially when I was younger at pipe, just having a lot of the guys, uh, paddle by and be like, you all good. (laughs) 
<laughs> checking in and um, and pushing me into waves and just kind of uh, yeah helping in that sense. Yeah, because I mean, you were like this super Grom. I mean, but like a tiny Grom out in in like serious death defying waves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the time, I was just scared and just like I just want to get one wave and go in. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I was just kind of looking at it as survival. <laughs> Did it feel like pressure? Uh, I wouldn't say it felt like pressure at the time. I guess more as I grew older, there, there was more pressure in it. At the time, it was more just like a um, wanting to hang out with the, the big guys. <laughs> uh-huh. When the surf magazines had the focus on you as like, here's this prodigy, basically, this kid who's like going to come up and blow everyone away, what was, did that feel like pressure? Did that, was it, I mean, I've seen, I guess like having watched a lot of surfing, that can, uh, that can be the demise of someone. That can like be too much, you know? Yeah, I, I, I really don't think I felt too much of the pressure until um, I kind of started on the WQS um, and was <laughs> not doing very well on it. Um, and for me, that was like a point where I was like, okay, this is, you know, kind of starting to think about like, what what am I really doing here? Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I think that's what that qualifying series tour can do to, do to a person. It just really makes you rethink kind of, what you're doing with your surfing. And so for me, always growing up, it just, I felt like I always had a lot of that push behind me of like competing and going onto the championship tour and trying to win a world title. And so for me, my whole goal in my life was to win a world title. And then when I started feeling like, like I couldn't even get to that championship tour, I was like, okay, <laughs> sorry. No, I, that, that was when I really started feeling the pressure. I felt like, yeah, it's interesting because I think, you're like the people's favorite. You're the favorite surfer for so many people. And while you've had some great success, a lot of people would probably say like your results competitively don't match like how advanced you are as a surfer. Do, do you ever think about that? Do you feel that way? Um, I do and I don't. Uh, I feel that, you know, I've definitely had some challenges in my career, um, but with injuries and such. And so, you know, like I, for me, I haven't had a full year on the tour since 2017, which has been def- definitely difficult to kind of cope with. Um, and for myself, because I just, I, at this point in, in my life, I, like I have a lot of confidence in myself and competing and surfing and just the way I think about it. And so I, I really want to do good and I want to win more world titles, you know, and so that can get frustrating. Um, but I guess I, I don't really think about it though, that I've like, uh, missed out on anything or in that world. Um, you know, winning a world title is a funny thing that I've come to learn. It's like a, the first one's kind of like this, all everything you think about it and it's like all you want to do. And there's not really a reason behind it, but you're like, I just, it's my life goal. I want to win it. And then you win it and you're kind of like, okay, (laughs) uh, there's like that 10, 20 minutes of like, yeah, I want it. And then the next morning you wake up and everything restarts again. Mm-hmm. And I think when you, when you kind of realize that you're like, okay, uh, not quite what I thought it was. Um, but that's fine. And you kind of have start to have more realizations that it's more about like the process and the friends you make and, uh, the challenges kind of that you get to overcome along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I guess what I'm getting to is that like, uh, for me, like I've, I've won the world title. I've, I won the world title again. And so I, I've gone through these things and it, now it's more for me about like life and challenges and getting through these things, uh, whether it's good or bad or whatever it is. And so if it's an injury, it just, I, I like to take it the same as winning a world title or competing on the tour, like just looking at it and be like, okay, this is how I'm going to approach this with a positive mindset. It's just another challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's really kind of moved away from like, I need to win five world titles and have this many triple crown wins and this many wins in competitive surfing. It's more about this kind of overlook of my life and how I want to approach these challenges. Yeah, that's really interesting. I, 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 um, I appreciate that a lot. I remember watching that thing that happens in, in sports where someone starts to win a number of mo- – uh, world titles and then when they win their sixth or seventh or ninth or whatever they hold up fingers like counting their world titles and i've always thought like as as a 
maybe more of a soul surfer, like that's not what this is about. Like the number of world titles you win is that's like one realm of surfing might quantify one success that way, but there's so many other ways to be a great surfer and to enjoy surfing. And the idea of like holding up your fingers to, to be, I mean, I, and I also understand that that is like the mindset of someone that wins a bunch of world titles, but it's really interesting. Cause I think you've, you've been, you're someone who I think as far as like sits, sits in the world of great surfers as has achieved on a massive scale competitively and won world titles, but also um, has this like what looks like a deep love of surfing and for, and and a, a desire to like keep pushing your surfing to new places that are not necessarily about the contest realm. Is that would that be accurate? Yes, for sure. I think that um, it go like the the contest realm for me has like I kind of was saying has really just turned into this mental thing of like, hey, how can I show up and uh, like, how can I show up in a heat with all this pressure, be relaxed and surf how I would surf in front of my house with no one around. And, um, that's when I've had the most relaxed. That's when I'm having the most fun. And that's when I'm the most creative in my surfing. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's kind of where competing has like started to translate into my free surfing, I guess, in a fun way. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, I think that I really, really enjoy just like when I have space and I'm by myself in the water and I can just like just have fun drawing different lines. Yeah. Like just, just, you know, and whether it's changing, like lately I've been really working on um, different boards and different equipment and fins and really kind of getting into that realm, which I haven't in at all in my life except for the past few years. And, um, it's, it's so interesting, you know, you, you make these tiny design changes and it, it totally changes the way you approach a wave, like your approach at the, at a bottom turn and how steep of an angle you're coming up at the lip, whether it's like a little farther off and you can like kind of do more of a down carve or if you're coming into a way more vertical with way more speed and, and the board's really holding like these little changes just change so much about the way you approach these waves. And. I've lately I've been really enjoying uh, learning that and I can, <laughs> for me, I, I just get lost. I can get lost in it for hours, mm -hmm. like just on the smallest little things in a session. And I'll just be by myself just again and again and again and again and again. And just uh, really finding that little, those little tiny feelings of it. No, that's, uh, I, I love to hear you say that because I think that's something that we can see that like in watching clips I think there's uh, my my sense is it's rock pile, but I don't know which break it is. But there's like in the last couple of years, you've been riding, surfing these like big meaty right handers and doing these carves in places where it's almost like gravity defying, like past vertical, sort of a place where it's like very hard. Your your natural tendency is to like <laughs> get out of that place, and you're like yeah gouging the rail in. But that I think like we I see that like I, it looks I look at it, I'm like. God, John's enjoying his surfing so much. He's still, he's 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 now like a, a fully developed surfer, but I still see the kid that I saw years ago where it looks like you're just, you're like playing in the ocean. Does it, do you still, are you getting as much joy now as you always did? Yeah, I think um, in my best moments, I really am. I, I, in my best moments, I feel just incredible and I feel like I can't stop. And I just, like I said, I get so lost in it. And then, you know, in the worst moments, I kind of, it's, it's almost impossible not to, but you do, you get wrapped up in this like pressure competitive kind of thing of like, oh, maybe I should be doing this and maybe I should be doing this. These guys are doing this and maybe I should be working on this. And um, rather than kind of getting lost in that, like just letting yourself go and kind of letting yourself go to what you're interested in on the wave. Um, so yeah, I, I don't want to lie and say that I, every session's like that for me, but because uh, I definitely have these sessions where I I get a little bit uh, flustered with what I'm doing, mm -hmm. but for the most part, like when I'm, especially when I'm here at home, or you, you just have these special sessions, whether it's just me and my brother, or me and my friends, and we're in West Oz or wherever we are, and I really do enjoy finding that feeling of that, just like you just kind of, I guess it's just it's really just letting go. You're just kind of letting go of it all, and you're just surfing, and um, I think most surfers in the world can understand like the that's like i i guess as a surfer that's what what you kind of when you find it that that feeling of letting go and just like being there and surfing and 
just laughing and having fun, but that's what it's all about. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely. Sometimes the duties of being, uh, you know, world famous pro surfer are like they're almost like opposite ends of the spectrum. They're almost like seemingly pulling away from that mindset. Yeah, and I think that's where I was going to is like before when I was talking about like kind of my worst moments of like when um, yeah that that competition kind of uh, just I, I don't really know how to explain it, but it's just this like competition world that can pull you uh, yeah it pulls you away into this mode of like that you have to do something a certain way and i think that's the worst feeling for me is when i feel like i have to do something a certain way um i like being a little more free and just kind of like relaxing and letting myself do it um and yeah so i i think that sometimes it can pull you in in a negative way but but there also that is also the positive about it is that it's always a work in progress mentally to be able to be like, Oh no, I'm getting kind of pulled in this way. Like, okay, I'm going to have to take a step back. Okay. I know I don't want to go that way. Now I feel good this way. That's interesting that I was letting that kind of drag me down that path mm -hmm. for a couple of days there, you know? Yeah. And so the, the mental learning aspect of competing is incredible. I mean, there's not really anything else like it where you're putting yourself in these pressure situations and whether it's pressure of having to win a heat or the pressure of, performing a certain way or ride a certain board or look a certain way or be a certain way. It's like, you can kind of like take a step back and go, Whoa, no, that's not, that's not where I want to go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who are your favorite surfers right now? My favorite surfers right now. Um, I still really enjoy watching uh, footage. Of, I like watching Dane Reynolds for me. Dane Reynolds was always just like, he's had this like power and kind of attacking to him and just kind of like, we were talking about like surfing, how he wanted to surf the wave, mm -hmm. even in events. Like I, re I really like watching some of his heats he had when he was on a tour um, because he was just attacking. Like he wasn't like uh, bringing his level down in order to get like an average score. It was always going for, it seemed like he was just always going for nines and tens, mm -hmm. which I really loved. Um, so I, I, I've been watching a lot of Dane lately and then I really enjoy watching my brothers surf. both my brothers. They just kind of have this just relaxed fun at what they're doing, but also with like a certain like kind of intensity, like especially Nathan, Yep, he gets this intensity when he's uh, going and kind of searching out these big slabs and around the world. And um, he's ridden some of the best waves. I mean, I've seen kind of at that size, and so for me, that's really, it's really cool to see that because when you see someone putting like intensity into what they want to do and they can see it and they go for it, it's, uh, you feel that too, you know, you're like, ah, oh, I get it. Like, I feel that like you're, you're going for what you want to do there and you're, and you're like getting it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've, I've really enjoyed kind of, uh, watching those guys as well. And then, and then there's, I think there's, um, you know, like I, I do wa enjoy watching Gabriel Medina surf, mm -hmm. um, He's just such a fierce competitor and such a machine in competition. Um, and that, just being in, in that in that kind of space of surfing, I, I just know how hard it can be sometimes. And and just to see the the performances that he can put on um, yep. are pretty amazing. Yeah, yep. Um, interesting talking about your brothers. So you're the oldest of three brothers. You were raised by a single mom. Your mom surfs as well, so I've I've seen the four of you out in the water together many times. Growing up, did it feel like pressure in terms of being the oldest and kind of leading leading the three of you guys forward? Um, or a responsibility, a duty? I don't think there was ever maybe a little bit of a responsibility, um, just trying to be like that older brother and <laughs> trying to lead in a good direction. But I think we were always just so engulfed in surfing that it was like it just felt like kind of we were all going the same direction. Yeah. Um, you know, it just, it, and especially once my brothers got a little older and we kind of like really started serving together and it turned into this kind of fun competition in the water. Um, and it just, yeah, Nathan, and you can see that they both saw what they wanted to do in surfing. And so it was just, this kind of more fun, everyone moving in the same direction. Yep. And this is probably testament to your mom, but like, uh, you guys were wholesome and there was, there were influences on the North shore that could easily take you in another direction. And I know, I know like Pete Johnson, the Johnson family were very instrumental. Uh, Jamie O'Brien, like you were, you were, you, you seem to be like always staying on the straight and narrow, let's call it. 
Yeah, I think we had a lot of really good um, inspirations around us. Uh, you know, the, the North Shore has a lot of really amazing people, amazing families. And just um, for us, my mom was just always just had us at the beach every day. We went to the Sunset Elementary and it was just like, I think the the ocean was our life. And so <laughs> it, uh, there wasn't really much else to think about. And when you kind of have these like, you're in the ocean all the time and then we're traveling during the summer and we're going to Indonesia and my mom's taking us to Europe and South Africa and all these amazing different places. You get to meet these different people and just kind of what I was saying earlier about different perspectives on life as you grow up. Um, and then coming home and just being so fired up on surfing and having these like inspirations and in surfing, whether like you said, it's Jamie O'Brien or, you know, it's a Kelly Slater or watching the pipe people win world titles, the pipe masters and Andy Irons and Kelly battling it out. It's like, you kind of just see these things and you're like, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, and you just don't really see anything else. Yep. Yes. What about sailing? I know you have a sailboat and you like to sail. And I think of that as, um, you know, there's such a waterman tradition in Hawaii and the, there are various ways to do that, but I, I it's interesting seeing kind of surfing and then it extending into basically sailing and on the open ocean. How, how did you get into that? And what do you love about it? Um, I got into sailing through a good friend of mine who actually films a lot of our stuff, Eric. Um, he just kind of had this little sailboat one summer a, a while ago now. And I don't know, I just did it once. And I was like, this is insane. Like, and I think just being always like in and around the water, do you see these different ways that you can approach the ocean? Um, and I just got locked in and I was like, this is amazing. And so like, starting to sail between islands and stuff and being like, wow, like I can go from here to there. And, and when you're like sailing a boat in the middle of the ocean and you're like surfing the thing down waves, it's such a cool feeling. Like you, cause you, you really feel the power of the wind load up on the boat and then you're like turning the boat down these like big swells and it's like riding down and it's just a whole different way of surfing or riding the ocean and mm -hmm. kind of understanding and seeing it. And for me, it's just been an incredible learning experience. Like we got to do this trip last year. We, we sailed to Fiji and um, it's like 3,200 miles from here or something. And it's just a long trip over the ocean. And, but just, you know, like seeing the weather and the way different things change as you cross the equator and the getting into the Southern hemisphere and the trades and just, I don't know, just all the little pieces of it and trying to put it together to kind of get yourself to one place over such a big distance to me is just the most interesting thing because we spend so much time surfing and we we're trying to read always trying to read these swells or these storms from these far off places in the middle of nowhere you know and they push the swells and then we focus so intently on uh these swells hitting the coast whether it's a north swell or a west swell what the wind is doing and then when you get out into the ocean and you start to see this like these storms and these you just start to see the way the ocean acts out there mm -hmm. is a really interesting and different perspective for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um to see the way these swells are like reacting with each other in the middle of the ocean it's it's crazy looking and kind of not what i really ever expected it to look like mm -hmm. um i guess or i i just never really put much thought into it until like you start getting out there and you're like oh this is uh, it's uh yeah it's a big ocean out there yeah 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 <laughs> has it has it influenced the way you think about surfing um, I think it does in little ways. I think it definitely has like my, uh, my knowledge of the way storm systems work, I guess, like just kind of tuning into that a little more, mm -hmm. um, I think has changed the way I read swells a lot too. Mm -hmm. Um, and just understand it a little more at a kind of deeper level. Yep. Um, but I think that's what I've gotten the most out of it is cause I don't know when you're sailing, I feel like there's not much to do on the or there's a lot to do but a lot of it is like reading the weather mm -hmm. and trying to understand what the weather is doing because it's just a safety factor and so you're always like looking at these weather systems and being like okay where do we want to be for this when this is here we're going this fast and kind of trying to set yourself up um and so i think that deeper understanding of it has helped me have a deep have a deeper understanding just for the even the waves in my backyard here and just really understanding directions and periods and just what things do mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that's beautiful. I remember talking to Kelly years ago, and he said something about like every wave has almost like a line that it wants you to ride, or there's a there's a line that's like the most in tune with the wave. Probably like a little bit like playing music and sort of being in the pocket or in the groove. Um, uh -huh. 
I, what you're what you're describing with sailing reminds me of that. But do you think that it's it, there's something about like aligning with with forces of nature, aligning with the ocean, aligning aligning with the wave? There's a kind of um, being fluid and in sync with it. That is, uh, I think, like so, like as surfers, it's something that we're we're unaware of, but we are we do we spend a lot of time trying to do. You know. Yeah, definitely. I think there's such an in sync thing with it. And I, but I think it's also I think that comes with a little bit of like letting go um, and kind of trusting, at least for me, that's when I find if I can get in the water and I can kind of just like, let go of like too many thoughts of how I should do something and more just kind of let it happen is when I find myself getting into those like kind of moments of being in sync with the wave. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that thought from Kelly uh, of you know, there's a kind of a, a line to be in sync with each and every wave. And there's a different line that you can draw because it's so true. You know, mm-hmm. when you're in those moments, you're really, you really are. You're just like, you're kind of feel loose and you're just like, you're going where the pressure puts you and you're, you're like pushing back the right amount of pressure on the wave as the wave is pushing on you. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when you push back the pressure, the right amount of pressure, it's this amazing feeling of like speed and freedom of like, you can go wherever you want on the way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. That you say letting go. And I remember that's the title of a film about Kelly Slater winning yeah. one of his world titles. And it's funny. Cause I always thought that was such a perfect title and there's such a, there's so much in that because I think, um, especially with competition, you know, there's, it's like, it's easy to really want it badly, but there's also like a level of, of like, grabbing onto it too tightly and that idea of we work hard on our surfing we get our skill level like our fitness our boards we do all the things all the sort of like the semi-tangible things that are around a competition moment and then when you're in the competition Mm -hmm. moment there is a level of of the letting go of the like not like i almost want to say not trying too hard you know definitely yeah that's totally it like it's um yeah, for me, like, I, that's where my whole life has gone to is like, you're always you're just trying to like, do the things that you can. And sometimes it can get overwhelming, because you, it's kind of endless of the things that you can get better at, you're, you're never really like, you'll and you never will be the best or meet perfection at anything. Mm-hmm. And so you can, you can kind of chase things into oblivion. Um, but sometimes it's just the the best ideas when I just go, you know what, my boards are the way they are. I've surfed this way. I know the lineups. I feel good physically. Okay. I'm just going to surf. Mm-hmm. And when you get that feeling of like, ha, huh, you can kind of just, you, it's like this really good feeling in those moments of pressure. Yep. When you have that feeling of what, that you really have let go in a heat and you're just like, oh my gosh, like I can't wait to surf right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. that's a pretty good feeling to have when you're competing against someone. Um, Cause you just know, like, you're like, when I get this next wave, like I'm, I, it's just I'm just gonna surf it the best I can. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're kind of like laughing to yourself almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, in the, say the next five, ten years down the track, what would you? Where do you want to? What do you want to do with your surfing? Where do you want to take your surfing? What's what? What matters to you? Um, I'm definitely taking it year to year. Uh, and I mean, I I don't know how how long if I'd be on the tour for another ten years or what and. I I enjoy competing in this moment right now, but I definitely can see myself like going off and focusing more on free surfing, just different and interesting waves around the world. Like that's been something for me that I feel like I've kind of sacrificed a little bit about being on the tour. You know, the tour takes a lot of energy and traveling and stuff to certain places around the world, which is amazing, but you miss out on a lot of these like really special places in the world um, for, for surfing, mm-hmm. especially like, there's some waves that I just look and I go, oh my gosh, that'd be <laughs> that'd be a real treat to go surf. Yeah, what's a day like for you when you're not sort of training for a contest or in a contest? Um, <laughs> uh, there's not too many days like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I just I really do enjoy um, I enjoy the training and the getting things together and the process of it. Um, for me, it's like I, I spend 97% of my life just tuning in and going, okay, like, no, this board can be changed a little bit. And sometimes I think Paisel hates me for it because <laughs> I'm like, no, that's just not there. It's not quite there. We need to change this by this much. <laughs> and, and then, it, or it's physically and it's like, okay, like 
I want to challenge myself physically and whether it's riding bikes or training my brother or whatever it is. Um, I think everything right now, like in my life has been towards that. And the only time that I've really kind of stepped away and done other things has been when I've gotten hurt and I can't do that. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the time when I, that, that I take, I go, okay, I'm hurt. I can't surf. I can't train for surfing. I can't do anything for competing. I'm going to pivot and go and go sailing or go sail to Fiji or do something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I want to ask you, John, you've done a lot of press, like what, anything that you've not talked about that would be fun. That's interesting that you're passionate about. Yeah. I mean, I just, I think one thing that I haven't really talked about so much is like, is just, uh, competing for me. Like as much as I love it, as I equally hate it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just, and I think I've talked about it a little bit, but for the most part, it's, it's really hard on me as for uh, like for my character. Mm -hmm. Um, it's really taxing energy wise. Like it's just, it's not in my character to, uh, I'm a little more introverted and I just, I don't like the, the scene of people and I don't like all the stuff that kind of surrounds competing sometimes. And so, um, I go back and forth a lot of, <laughs> a lot of like, I don't want to do the tour anymore. I'm done. Or I just want to go free surf and enjoy and go maybe, I don't know, just do something else and focus on my brand and build that and do other things. And, um, cause I really enjoy stuff like that. It's just more hyper-focused in doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think I, that's one thing I haven't talked about so much is just like the struggle I do have with competing is, um, it's a little bit hard sometimes. And I just, sometimes I don't love it as much as it may look like I do. <laughs> uh huh. Now that's interesting. So, so let's just pretend that I'm your sports therapist right now and, <laughs> yeah. and I'm trying to get into your head. Like at what point, okay, let's just say like, it's the morning of the contest and you've got your rent a car. Let's say you're somewhere, Margaret river, you've got your rent a car, yep. you're staying in your Airbnb or your hotel and you've got a heat and you're driving in. Like at what point when you go into the, say the VIP parking for the pro surfers, at what point are you like, this is not my scene or this is not my thing. Like how does that, what, what goes on in your, in your mind? What part of it is unappetizing to you? Um, I think it's just, it's, it's not like it's like any people or any specific people. Like I, I really enjoy like the one-on-one -on -one time I get with people when I'm on a tour. Like if I see like a Felipe or, or someone else and we're in the water and we're surfing or Kolohe and we just have a session and it's super fun. I love that stuff. It's incredible. But it's when it's, when it's all at once. Mm -hmm. And I just get so uncomfortable. I'm just like, oh, I, just, I don't want to be here right now. Like, like I just get hot and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to go find my own little zone. And I think Margaret's is a funny example because like Margaret's has this uh, where the competitors park. It's actually like right next to the contest area. And you can actually just sit in your car and watch the waves and then go to your heat. Mm -hmm. And I think the past like four years I've gone to Margaret's, I don't think I've really set foot in the competitors area except for grabbing, going and grabbing my jersey. Uh-huh. I just sit by the car and do my warm up there and just kind of do my thing by myself. Yeah. No, that's so interesting. You know, ha having watched a lot of pro surfing over the years, I remember I'm, I'm contemporary with Tom Kern and I watched him from an amateur. I mean, I competed in con amateur contests before he was ever a pro. I watched him win his first world title at bells when he beat Aki in that famous semifinal. Yeah. Um, and I watched his whole kind of surf odyssey trajectory, etc. Um, he was always very sensitive. I think when he was competing, he was, he was like a machine. Like he, he, he built his thighs up to be more powerful. He did all the things to like become the better athlete and competitor. And he won his world titles. I definitely saw a thing towards the tail end of his career. I think it was like a smaller pro-am event at Huntington beach. And I remember seeing Tom, this would have been the early nineties. And he had this look on his face. Like he didn't want to be there at all. And I remember, um, he just looked uninspired, like maybe just kind of burnt out on it all. And I remember thinking to myself, the moment you question competition, the moment the whole idea of winners and losers in the surf and, and clenching your fist and being victorious, if you, the moment you like question that as an idea, the moment you, you, something like turns off inside of you, that is that fire, you know? And, and I think mm -hmm. it weirdly, like sometimes being really evolved as a person almost turns down that that fire to some extent what i what i'm getting at that's a long-winded way of asking like do you ever sort of question the whole idea the, the the like ideology of competition yeah i do but i think i've 
questioned it since, I don't know, since my first few years on the tour. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's always been something that I've just been like, uh, cause I don't know. I, I guess I just see, I see the two sides of it so clearly. Like I see this free surfing side and what surfing is at like a, the level of like a, your soul, you know, like you go out and you surf and you have these sessions that just fill you up and you just come in and you're high-fiving your friends and you're like, that was the best session ever. That was incredible. And then you win an event and you know, you're like, that was fun. That was cool. And that was like, but there's just a slight difference to it. And, but there's kind of, yeah, I don't know. So I've, I just, I've seen, I can kind of see both sides of it. And so sometimes I, it, it's always caused me to kind of question it a little bit because one, I feel like one one of them, you're you know you're sharing waves with your friends, and it's an amazing feeling. And the other one, winning events is it's a very selfish thing mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. in a way. It's it's and it, it, it it's hard after years and years of doing it. You know, you're just everything is so focused and in, intense to win these world titles. Like you, everything has to be focused into what you're doing. Like you have to say no to so many things. You have to sacrifice friends. You have to sacrifice family. You have to these moments with friends and family and, and say no to them in order to like better yourself at what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think that's where it can, it can kind of get tiring and that's where I kind of start to see like, wait, well, like, I don't know, like it is your life and you go is, you know, winning one more world title going to change things or is winning this event going to change things in the end? Like, and no, probably not. Like you you probably want to become a little, I don't know. For me, at least I've, I've gained way more of an interest in being kind of bettering myself in the way I think Mm -hmm. than, than actually like, uh, just going for one single trophy that lasts 20 minutes. It's crazy. You know, you win a world title and then you wake up, I I swear it's like you wake up a month later, a couple days later and it's reset. Everything's reset and you're starting the tour again. And the new tour is coming. There's new people on the tour. Everything can, and everything's just, it's just another thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's so interesting. And, and I think surfing's always, ex- it's always had that weird kind of like confusion about it, right? Because there are a lot of sports that you really can't play without playing to win. Like if you go play soccer, two teams play, someone's going to win baseball, basketball, tennis, et cetera. Like you go in and you're, unless you're just rallying, say, on the tennis court. Um, I'm thinking right now of, did you ever read the great memoir by uh, Andre Agassi called Open? No, I haven't, it, but I heard, it's a, I heard it's really good. It's incredible. And it opens up, you know, he, he wrote it after he'd retired. And he basically says, he's, his, his like thesis is that I hate tennis. And tennis was something that my dad got me into young and he wanted me to be great. And I went out and went, it's great. But once, once I got a like serious taste of it and moved on from it, I realized like I don't even like the game anymore. And I remember <laughs> when, I, when I read it, it was so fascinating because it made me think I, there's probably a lot of athletes would say that. Like there's something about, again, like what I said earlier, the ideology of competition can be a mindset that you, you don't want to live there your entire life. It may be fine when you're young and you, and you work your way through it, but at some point you might want to move on from it and just look at people with less of like a competitive nature. But, but the other thing that's great about surfing is like, you can be a free surfer. Like you don't, you can absolutely exist without ever trying to beat the guy next to you. You could just, it can be a much more personal spiritual pursuit and you can still be a pro and successful at it, you know? Yeah, it really is. And it's amazing in that, in that sense. And, um, you know, like, you can go and film movie projects and you can go and surf big waves or like, there's a lot of different avenues, especially today, like in this day and age, like with surfing, like you can kind of do whatever you want in surfing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. What about big waves? You've won the Eddie. You, 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 you clearly charge big waves. You like big waves. What, 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 how do you, what's your relationship? Like when, when there's a massive swell on the North shore and you're there and, and you know, it's going to be giant tomorrow. Do you get, anxious what does it feel like i love it i get so fired up on it it's like (laughs) just because i think um it's not really something that i chase all year long and so when i'm at home and there is a special big swell coming it's it doesn't happen that often for me and so i love the preparation of big wave surfing i think it's really um interesting to me like you you know you have to have you have to be prepared in order to do it right and 
whether it's like you have your ski and your safety and you're switching out, like me and my friends switch off with safety for each other sometimes, or you have your padded and float suits and just your boards all together and everything's right because it's just kind of like, kind of, it's kind of like competing in a way, but without the competing because there's a lot of preparation beforehand for this one day. Mm -hmm. And I really, I really enjoy that. And I like that. And after almost every time after a big wave session, you just come in and you're just like, just the adrenaline from the day and that feeling of like finishing the day. And you're just like, Oh my gosh, that was crazy. And you're just laughing to your friend about this, like 25 foot wave that you guys both got caught inside on. And I think that's the only like time in life when you can kind of laugh at something that's so scary is like when you're like getting caught inside with your friend and you're just looking at this wave, like, there's the only thing you can do is laugh, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. At, at this point, what are you most proud of in terms of what you've achieved? Um, I think I'm most proud of, I'm definitely just proud of my competitive career and where I've gotten to with that. There's been a lot of ones that have been unexpected for me, you know, like winning the Eddie was one. I was just like, I just never expected that. I just kind of, went into it like i'm just gonna do the best i can and so there's there's definitely a lot in that in that sense but i think um the i really have i really enjoy like my working on my mindset and where i've gotten to with that and the challenges that i've had to be able to work on that i think has been really interesting for me like through the injuries of the past couple years it's 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 hard when (laughs) uh something keeps uh pushing you back down when you're trying to accomplish something. And it just keeps like just shoving you to the ground and going, Nope, reset next year, reset next year, reset next year. And so like, for me, it's been an interesting mental kind of battle just to kind of every time, just like, just come through it and come through it and come through it. And I've learned a lot about myself through that. So I got to say that, you know, but that's like an accumulation of my life really is like, everything my mom brought me up to be into into competing and learning about kind of being a little more thoughtful of what I'm doing and thinking and feeling and then kind of tuning it into these like other challenges. It's been, uh, yeah. So I guess that's kind of like the culmination of, of it all. Yep. Uh, who are your heroes? My heroes, my mom is my hero. She still surf pipe. It's pretty incredible. Hmm. And she raised us and yeah. Um, my brother's, definitely are my heroes just the way they carry themselves and the way they surf big waves and it's really fun to watch um i really enjoy watching like kelly slater i just think what he's done in his career is incredible to be able to um mentally put yourself towards something 100 percent for so long and the way that he still surfs today and competes is it's so inspiring mm-hmm, like it's mm-hmm. it's absolutely incredible yeah it really is yeah. like I, I just don't even know what else to say about it like yeah he's he's won 11 world titles but what he's still doing today is is equally incredible and i just kind of got to give <laughs> so much credit to him for that and it's really inspiring so he's definitely one of my heroes um just yeah and so and then my friends here at home also my heroes. I don't know. I just, I think the people that are close to me and the people that I get to see in day to day life and interact with and be a part of their lives, they're all my heroes. Cause it's just, it's so fun just to see the different challenges they have and that way they approach them and how everyone grows kind of through it all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Speaking of Kelly, you know, the one thing that I find so inspiring about him and it's almost like beyond his surfing and his surfing is of course the thing that I, that, that I connect with most when I look at it, it's just the, so beautiful, but He's someone who I think is sort of, we live in this, this, this time in history and this culture of like optimization, self-optimization where you can, you know, we have like the Huberman lab podcast where it's all about like bettering yourself in every possible way, Mm -hmm. sleep, diet, exercise. Um, do you, are you like that? Like, do you enjoy that kind of, um, pushing and testing yourself in terms of making small goals and, and fulfilling them and all that optimization stuff? Yeah, I love it. I love all that stuff. And just optimizing yourself physically for like, for me and Nathan are really into it. Like just optimizing physically for like endurance and just strength and just 
being able to push ourselves like past where we think we can go and like see how we can do it. We're so, (laughs) we love all the little data things like the whoop and Garmin stuff and just all these little things that you just take all this info from and you're like, okay, this is what happened on that session or that bike ride or that hike or whatever it was. How can we go longer? How can we do it more? This is where we felt like we were tired out. And for us, that that's become really interesting. Like, what just wanting to be able to surf. Like, okay, we surfed for seven hours yesterday. We can surf, we surf for six hours today. How do we surf for seven hours again tomorrow and f- still f- feel relatively okay? <laughs> no, I love it. I know it's so fun. This I think like there's there's a lot of horrible stuff in the world right now, but the one thing that is really exciting is that stuff. And it's where with yeah. there's so much science where we know about it in a way that we did not before. Um, what would be, this is the cliched uh, question, but what is your morning routine? My morning routine always is changing. Um, I'd say when I'm around competition a lot, it, I usually start with coffee, some meditation and some movement right away. That's kind of like my main go-to every day is like just getting the body moving and having a little t- mental time to kind of like reset and kind of get yourself ready for the day. Um, and then when I'm at home, it's a, I kind of let myself go a little more free mm-hmm. and it's kind of waking up and just kind of assessing the ocean, I guess, really. It's like looking at the ocean. That's kind of where it's, what starts my day every day is going, okay, am I going to surf today? Am I going to foil? Like, what am I going to do today? Uh-huh. <laughs> and just kind of like really assessing what I'm going to do for that day. And, and I, a lot of that depends on whether I'm training or getting ready for an event, but, um, you know, just deciding like where, how I can apply myself in the best day, in the best way for that day. Mm-hmm. What kind of meditation do you do in the morning? I do a mixture of visualization stuff. Um, just also depending on what I'm doing in that time or, uh, kind of just like self-reflection and, and just like resetting mm-hmm. and just kind of, it's always nice to like focus on just the breathing for a good 10 minutes. It's like, really simple. I don't know. It helps me a lot. Some people doesn't like it. You try to tell, tell Nathan to do that and he wouldn't do it ever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, um, I don't know. I think it really helps me a lot and just kind of taking a quick breather and just like resetting my mind and allowing myself to kind of take a, take a step back, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about your company? Let's, let's talk about that. Yeah. Um, the company, uh, my company Florence has been super fun. Um, just, like, I don't know. I just feel like I've got the best team in the world. Everyone that I've worked with for the past, like 10 years at Hurley and then coming over to the, and everyone kind of doing this and working on this together has been, it's just been incredible. And to have like the freedom to uh, build stuff the way you want to build it. And for the conditions that we're in every single day and like the things that I'm, I can like pretty confidently go like, okay, like I spend a lot of time in the ocean. I spend a lot of time around the sun and I spend a lot of time doing this. I confidently can say like, this is, pretty comfortable and or this needs this or and give my like opinion yep. and so i and to, yeah just to be kind of a little bit hyper focused on the stuff that i'm doing mm-hmm. in the day-to-day mm-hmm. and so i can actually like wear these things and be like oh my gosh i can't like i just i laugh at how i never realized how excited i would get about the business and like when you know when we have like quarterly meetings or new products coming out or design stuff like i get so excited and i get so much energy from mm-hmm. it um, it's, it is so fun. I don't know. I never realized like how much fun I could have doing it. Right. And I would imagine that it feels a little bit like there's less at stake. Like your surfing is something you've pursued so vehemently for so many years and to, to have a, a, a business venture. That's a, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's a, it's a big thing for you, but it also like, it's not necessarily what you'd plan to do when you were 12 years old or 13 years old. So you, I, I, there's something about like having a loose hand in doing something where you're, you, you're not, your identity is not so much in it. Does it feel that way? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I think that, uh, yeah, like you said, I never expected like this and I never expected to be like, I was always really interested in it. Um, and I think you, like you said, like when you have a loose hand in something and you're not, your identity is not really there. You're kind of like, okay, like, yeah, that's cool. Like, all right, sure. Let's do that. You know? Mm-hmm. But when it's like you and it's, and it's like your life and everything's kind of going into it, it's such a different feeling. And it's such a, it's so much more rewarding because you come out with these things that are like actually really cool. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And you're like, this is 
this is insane. Like I would buy this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you make something, you're like, I would definitely go to the store and buy this. Like uh-huh. it's a, it's such a cool feeling. Like, uh, I don't know. I just, and, and it's also like just the, my family and my friends and everyone around me, like always has like really good feedback. Cause everyone, they're all doing similar things, whether it's some of my friends that go hunting or it's some of my friends that are fishing all day or, big wave surfing or spending time in the mountains or whatever it is. I have a really good group of people around me that can give me this feedback that I'm like, that's insane. And I respect like, I don't know the, all these outdoor things I just have such a huge respect for. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, whether it's, I, I never climb mountains, but (laughs) climbing mountains or rock climbing or uh, snowboarding or fishing or hunting or whatever it is. Like, I just have such a huge respect for these people that can go out and kind of connect with, uh, nature and be out there and sustain themselves. And, um, so for me, that's always been a really big inspiration. Mm -hmm. And so when we can make, when we can make gear and stuff that is like supports that and in a really good way, and it's really cool. I I don't know. It's, it's, to me, it's like one of the coolest things in the world. Uh, No, I think so too. And there's, there's so much, so much utter like useless crap in the world. And to do something that has that integrity and that has a, a purpose, you know, there's a, there's a utilitarian function there as well. Yeah. Also too, like, I think there's, there's also for me, like, uh, just from growing up in the world, in my life and my area, like I just have always had a real good connection with nature. Yeah. I don't know, just being out and surfing in the ocean. And, and I think when you're out in it and you're connected to it, you kind of see it better. I don't know. You, you grow such a love for it. Yeah. Um, that, and so for me, like I, that's kind of been one of the main goals for me with this is like, y- you make this stuff that gets people excited to use it and go outside mm-hmm. and go and be like, oh, like I want to go surf all day or I want to go spend time in the mountains or whatever it is and kind of go after these like fun goals, whether you're just going on a hike and you've never hiked before in your life or you're going to paddle across the channel or whatever it is, but just being out there and getting out there and just being kind of connected with nature, I feel like is uh, very important yeah. for like the next generation and generations to come. And I think it's one of the most important things because you just, you grow like a love for it that you, yeah, that's stronger than kind of like anything else. Great talking with you, John. Yeah. Good talking with you too, Jamie. Soundings is produced by me, Jamie Brissick, and Jonathan Shiflett. You can find it on Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify. Our theme song is Ohana by Farmer Dave and the Wizards of the West. Soundings is brought to you by the Surfer's Journal, a reader-supported publication made possible by sponsorship from Birdwell, FCS, Patagonia, Rainbow, Vans, Visla, and Yeti. The Surfer's Journal is published bi-monthly, If you haven't done so yet, I encourage you to visit surfersjournal.com and subscribe. Thank you for listening to Soundings, and until next time.